Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we are continuing our series of getting started with a certain faction and we are having a look at the Union today. These types of guides are not definitive guides in any way, shape or form, but they are there to help new players uh, to make sense of how to start with this game because Dystopian Wars is a game that uses plastic sets that can be built into, built into multiple options and that can be a bit daunting for new players. So this is more of a what can you buy if you want to get into a certain faction and what can you build to make them uh, a good choice for new players. The first thing I'm going to talk about is why would you want to use the Union as your main faction in Dystopian Wars? What are their uh, their playstyles? Um, of course the miniatures have to be to your liking, there's always the rule of cool, but if you are looking for a bit of extra information on what are they like on the tabletop, this is the video for you. And if you want to see more of these types of videos uh, about many different factions, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future updates such as these to help new players. The Union is a fleet that is specialized in a long to medium range combat. Um, that's not to say that they can't do close work and point blank kind of work, but those require some uh, dedicated units. In general, this is a fleet that likes to hang back and blast your opponent with this type of long range and medium range firepower. It also makes good use of the classic weapons found in the game, uh, i.e. gun batteries, rocket batteries and torpedoes. Um, this is helpful for people who don't like to uh, memorize a whole laundry list of different weapon stats because the Union makes more use of traditional weaponry. It's also a fleet that is great for people who like uh, a combo gameplay. Many of these uh, units in the Union list provide area buffs to uh, boost the rest of your ships and if you're the kind of player who likes to find out nifty little combos to make the most out of your ships, this definitely is a faction that's going to uh, be a good one for you. Also, these ships come equipped with uh, paddle wheels. Um, this is normally something found only on river boats, but in the dystopian age they have found or discovered new materials that allowed for this tech to be upscaled to naval uh, warfare at the open seas. And that gives the Union some incredibly great movement, great flexibility and good board control. These things can stop and turn on a dime if need to in-game, which is Excellent, especially if you're fighting in more tightly packed terrain. And uh, another great selling point of them is they've got some very cool esoteric units, such as flying robots and uh, Akron observers. So if you like lots of tiny flying things, this is also a faction for you. If all of that sounds right up your alley and you're going like, yes, that's the fleet for me, where do you start with this one? Well, the best starting off point for this fleet, I think, is the Constitution Battle Fleet. Um, why? Because it's an excellent flagship option for any starting Admiral. It does come with its special rules, but it's not a whole laundry list of them, so they're not too intimidating to start off with and get your rules right in the early starting games that you're playing. Um, and an additional good thing is the Union Orbat has quite a few unique and named flagships based on this constitution class and there's nothing wrong with using that constitution ship in their different named variants if you for replayability purposes want to use those different name ships to have more interesting gameplay because they all introduce nifty little special rules that can really make the fleet operate in a different way also why do i think this is a good uh, starting off point it does come instantly with uh, the two Akron observation rotors which are these small units found on top here and uh, these are very key in that combo gameplay style that the Union likes to use because they act as uh, a guidance system for uh, for your rocket armed troops troops armed with uh, or ships I should say armed with rocket batteries um, can use these to great effect and with this you instantly get a very flexible box set that you can build in many different ways. You can start off with traditional gun batteries, which are very straightforward to use in the Union Force, um, but you can still take the turrets off and replace them with rocket batteries and get units that operate in a completely different way in-game and are still very good to use. So this is a very 
great way to start. I would advise you to build the cruisers that come with it as Yorktowns however because those are the most flexible ones in the list. And what about fleet expansion after you've got that constitution battle fleet set? Well you can go one or two routes. You can do incremental increases and expand through frontline squadrons or support squadrons, the plastic boxes that are provided by War Cradle. They aren't too expensive, they go anywhere around 25 to 30 euros depending on where you are, which is very comparable to dollars. Um, and if you expand with one of these frontline squadron boxes, which can be found at the top here, you are essentially doubling down on the ships you can find in your constitution battle fleet. Which is handy should you want to increase that unit size of Yorktowns that I mentioned earlier to being a full unit of three of them. And these Yorktowns, they are such a flexible and good unit that uh, you can include them in any competitive list that you're building down the line, they never disappoint. They are some of the best mainstay uh, ships, I should say, especially because of that flexibility. If I want to compare them to another army, such as uh, the, the German Blüchers, which are also mainstay units, they are not nearly as interesting to make different builds with as these Union ones. Now if you don't want to go for frontline squadrons, you can always go for support squadrons as well, and that really starts unlocking that combo gameplay that you get with them. There are a number of support ships that you can build out of uh, the support squadrons, such as the Montgomery and the California class, that can really elevate your other ships to higher levels. And on top of that, you get one of the most interesting units in the entire roster, which are the RC-52 Automata, the flying little robots found there. They're immensely fast and they are those close quarters units that I mentioned earlier, the specialized ones that are meant to hunt down the opponent in, uh, in point blank range. And another advantage of expanding through support squadrons is that you can uh, sort of in steps introduce SRS token gameplay, which is not the most complex mechanic, mechanic ever found in, uh, in wargaming, but for newer players that can be a bit daunting because it adds a lot of different phases to the game. And through these support squadrons you can slowly start building that up as well. Now of course if you're not the kind of guy who wants to take things slowly you can just expand your whole fleet and pretty much be done with it for a standard 1500 points by getting the Enterprise box set. What is the Enterprise? Well that's the big box for the Union and that comes with a ton of plastic options. You can see the Enterprise fleet painted up here by Das from War Cradle Studios uh, in the top right corner and you get a lot of plastic options. It comes with three of the frontline squadron sprues and with another three of the support screws. So everything I said previously applies to this set, pretty much. If you're going to go this route though, I would recommend that you build at least one of your support ships as the Montgomery, um, because that one is a mandatory option in the uh, Enterprise fleet, which is the themed fleet built around the, uh, the actual Enterprise ship. And why do I think this is the best way to go, if you can just uh, drop that kind of money on that box straight away. Well, the Enterprise is an absolute beast of a unit in-game, uh, and it's an anchor unit, one that is going to be found in many competitive lists, if you ask me. Uh, it provides you with a lot of SRS tokens straight off, uh, off the go, and uh, provides you with some very interesting rules regarding victory and valor cards that I can only recommend to new players that they uh, sort of have in the back of their head if they want to expand lists. Also, um, the Enterprise ship itself is one that doesn't use too many plastic bits on it. Traditionally, these big boxes come with uh, resin flagships that will consume some of the plastic parts found on the plastic sprues uh, to complete the build. That's hardly the case with this Enterprise ship. That one is like 95% resin, and if I'm not mistaken, only the rocket batteries are taken from the, uh, the plastic sprues which leaves you with almost all options open for the rest of the plastic sprues. So this is why I can only recommend this box for uh, expansion. 
Now in my previous video I uh, made an example list of 1500 points with the Sultanate, but I'm not going to be doing that, mostly because, um, well, this changes quite a lot. Points costs are always tweaked a bit, and uh, that probably isn't good for the longevity of the video itself. So I decided to add another um, thing to these uh, getting started with videos, and that is what you can expect on the horizon for this faction. Um, War Cradle Studios has a Facebook group called the Sturginium Lounge, which you should definitely check out. Um, and they quite often show a bit of artwork of units that are to come for a certain faction. And like I said, I did mention flying robots at the start of the video. Um, this one was uh, sort of shown on the, that group a few weeks ago, which is the John Henry Vitruvian Colossus. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Vitruvian Colossus are, um, those are giant warships. They're not really robots. They are operated by a crew of humans. Um, but these guys uh, essentially fly around, skim around on the battlefield and just whack things with a great big hammer uh, in retaliation. So they're sort of dragged in on big barges and then when battle erupts those barges aren't really used but these guys just fly off and start pummeling the opponent. So if you're all about that kind of uh, extra elements to your force, the Union is pretty much got this covered soon. <laughs> now what soon is, we don't quite know, but uh, yeah, that's within a, a year, maybe two. Also a useful thing to mention about the Union fleet is, um, it's not out yet, but there will be a mercenary battle fleet from the Union called the, the Eclipse Company um, that you could get and use in any other fleet down the line as well. I always think that's a bit of a selling point for starting out with a faction. If if you ever want to start with a secondary faction, you can use parts of your original one as well. So that's definitely a strong suit for them as well. And it won't just be robots taking to the skies. Um, there was a bit of artwork teased as well about the Republic class Cloudraker airships. So the Union is also set to receive blimps to uh, to uh, accompany them in battle. And if I'm not mistaken, the Eclipse Company was sort of based on these uh, blimp airships. So yeah, you've got that to look forward to. I hope this video was informative for you and that you uh, were able to sort of see if this faction is uh, for you. If you did like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm finds it more easily for people looking for dystopian wars. And if you want to see more of them, I do hope to see you in the next video. Bye.